Greetings humans, most of the videos on this channel have been about repairing and using multi-track cassette recorders uh, but I've had this uh, MPC live for a while and I want to start making some videos about how the MPC can be used together with a port studio like this Tascam 244. I've had a look around, I've seen a lot of videos about taking the sound out of the MPC and then processing it through some sort of external effects unit. I haven't found any videos about taking the sound from another device, another instrument and using the MPC as the effects processor. And that, that, that seems like a bit of an oversight because there's a ton of effects built into this thing. Basic stuff like parametric EQs, compressors through reverb, flangers, uh, onto kind of more sophisticated and newfangled stuff like uh, granulators and auto-tune. Previously I made some videos presented as a tutorial on how to use the Tascam 244 where I was building up a song one instrument at a time. And since I still need to add vocals to that track to complete it, I thought I would take this opportunity to use the MPC as a vocal processor as I record my vocals onto the 244. I'll put links in the description to the preceding videos in this series for anyone who wants to like have a full catch up on how I got to this point but here's a brief recap on the work that's been done. <laughs> And so today I'm going to record the vocals onto those two open tracks. On the first of those open tracks I'm going to be using the MPC as an insert effect. So the microphone signal is going to go into the preamp on the Tascam 244 but from there it's going to pass into the MPC where I'm going to be adding some compression, some noise reduction and some reverb. And it's going to come back out of the MPC back into the mixer of the 244 and it's going to be printed onto tape there. And by printed I mean Mean that I can't change the amount of reverberation or compression that's going to take without redoing the performance as well. On the second open track I'm going to be doing something kind of similar but rather than using the built-in preamp on the 244 I'm going to use the MPC as a preamp. Now that might not actually sound good, I haven't tried it yet. Um, the reason to do that is because this is kind of doubling as the third in a series of tutorials about the Tascam 244 and because it's possible to use an external preamp but a lot of people are either unaware of that or not sure how to implement it. I'm going to try and use the MPC in that way, um, which means that the microphone's going into the MPC through the effects and coming out of the output of the MPC. And from there, it's going into just the receive socket on the back of the 244's second mixer channel that bypasses the corresponding preamp on the 244 and from there it's getting recorded to tape so uh, again it's uh, you know I'm printing the effect it's you know a destructive form of recording I won't be able to edit the effects after the performance is over and then once those recordings are done I'm going to hook up the MPC as a send effect putting it into the auxiliary loop of the 244 that will allow me to use it as an echo and reverb use it, which I can judiciously dial in as a special effect in certain sections of the vocals. That's a non-destructive way of using the effects. Um, you know, I can, if I don't like it, redo it. It would be kind of a performance thing that I'm doing as I create the final mix down recording the 244 onto another medium. Just as an aside, maybe you're regular to this channel and you know that I've only just started showing my face in these videos, it's usually point of view with just my wee tattooed hands, and uh, you think maybe this this hat that he's wearing, that like that's a step too far, like maybe he's trying to tap into some sort of like white rap credentials, like a latter day Fred Durst just because he's got an MPC in the video. Um, I just want to clarify that I live in Scotland, it's a cold country anyway, it's winter, Scottish people are cheap, I've got the heating turned down and uh, this is to keep my bald head 
warm. Before we get into the tracking, I just want to talk quickly about latency. For anyone who doesn't know, latency is a delay that you get when you process live audio with digital technology. It exists because basically any computer, no matter how fast, takes some time to perform its calculations. Companies like Line 6 and Axe Effects, their products are designed to be used in that way all the time, so I imagine that it's a big design focus of theirs to make the latency imperceptibly small. I figured for the MPC Live that maybe that wasn't such a priority for the designers of those because the use case that I'm demonstrating today is maybe like kind of unusual, like um, you know a lot of people are like you know chopping up samples and yada yada yada, they're not using it in this way. And so I wasn't sure if it was going to work well and I'm going to be honest with you, I haven't like properly researched, I certainly haven't timed the latency on it. I don't know how you would do such a thing. All I can tell you is that subjectively I didn't notice any problems with latency. I have in the past used things like amp modeling through a computer when the drivers weren't very good and you could feel that there was a bit of lag between what you're playing and what you're hearing. I'm certainly not getting that with NPC Live so I think it does have a low enough latency to be used in this way if that was a concern of yours. Right, I think that's enough preamble. Let's uh, get on with the tracking and demonstrating and what have you. Um, I'll start with showing you what the physical connections are between the two items and what cables I'm using and stuff like that. In case anyone is interested, this is the microphone that I'm going to be recording the vocals with. It's called a T-Bone BD200. You can get it from Thulman in the EU. This is going to be sitting on a microphone stand, obviously. And it's got the standard XLR connector. Here we are at the rear panel of the Tascan 244. And uh, here's the other end of the microphone cable. I'm using a cable that's already wired to go to a TS, that's tip sleeve, that's a mono plug. So uh, effectively one of the three strands of wire inside that XLR cable is kind of loose and not doing anything. You can get adapters if you've got an XLR to XLR cable to adapt it to this kind of socket because obviously the 244 doesn't have an XLR input. But anyway, I'm plugging the microphone in there. Now these access points here, what happens is that signal will go to the preamp for the mixer channel one. With this little kind of U-shaped plug in, what happens next is that the signal would go to the EQ and the fader and the pan control and everything before hitting the tape machine. But if we remove that, the send is the output of the preamp and this receive is like the input to the mixer channel and then the tape player. So what we're going to be doing is taking this signal from the preamp out, sending it to the MPC. Once it's been processed by the MPC, then it's going to go back into this receive socket and then it'll go from there to the tape machine. So to connect the MPC in 244, then I'm going to use this stereo RCA to RCA cable because RCA is what those sockets are. However, at the other end at the MPC, it's expecting quarter inch jacks. So I've got these little adapters and they cost me like 99 pence each or something off eBay in the UK. Um, so they convert the RCA socket to a quarter inch jack socket because you've got to understand the same sort of signal has been carried by these cables it's just the connectors that are different so let's say send which is the output from the 244 preamp is going to be the red one that's going to be going into the input in the MPC the output of the MPC will use this black one and it's coming back into the 244 on that socket there Okay, let's go and plug these into the MPC now. So the red, one of this pair, we were saying was the output. So we're going to put that into an input. I'm just going to go for the left input. You know, you can choose which input you want to go to an audio track within the MPC software. And then the output, I could assign it to any one of the six output sockets. I happen to choose socket four. Here we are at the front face of the 244. So um, input one on this is set to mic. So I've got the mic level up pretty high. EQ's set pretty flat, um, set for unity gain with this fader in the sort of seven to eight range. Fader's in the seven to eight range because it's in sync mode and I've armed track one, then only the leftmost of these VUs is lit. And um, this is passing through the MPC now. I'll show you the meters together in a minute, but you can see that that's responding to me tapping the microphone just off screen there. Within the MPC itself, I've got an audio track set up here. 
it's very important that this button here is lit in white and says in because that's allowing you to monitor the input so that means that the signal is passing from whatever you've set as the input to the output which is what we want so if i choose input configuration for that audio track you can see i've got input is set to input one output is set to output four i mean you could set those however you want but you remember earlier when i was plugging the wires in that's the input and output that i selected again just set to unity but you can see i've got some insert effects here vintage compressor noise gate and the air spring reverb Look at those individually. That's my settings for the compressor. That's my settings for the noise gate. Just to get a bit of the room hum and everything out of there. Here's the spring reverb. And just so you can see that everything is connected up, if I tap on the microphone, see how it's responding both on this meter here in the MPC and on this meter here on the 244. So my affected signal is passing through there. Right, I'm set up just around the corner from where the uh, 244 and MPC are. They're just over there. I'm going to go for a take. Got my specs on because although this is sort of an old song, I've rewritten the lyrics recently and I don't really remember them. So I've got them down here so you'll see me peering down to remind myself what I'm thinking. Mainly miserable things. Mainly misery. <laughs> Get my headphones on. Treat you to the dulcet tones of my pipes. Dooby 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 doo. Branch apples and epigraph. Those ideals in bread Washed away like mocks in the sand Better stay in bed oh, I tell you, we haven't sung for a while I don't know, if it's just, I guess it's your palate, soft palate, I don't know about it You can see feeling back here, I'm just like Anyway, um, so I think I went <laughs> principles, um, so there's probably a nasty pop in there. Uh, I had a bit of a, oh, what are the lyrics again moment, um, and there's a little timing mistake. But generally speaking, that first take, I'm happy enough with it. I'll probably just leave it like that. A lot of these songs, I'll probably end up re-recording with a bit more care and attention once I get my uh, Tascam 388 and 38 up and running in conjunction with my DAW. I'm planning to have this kind of hybrid digital real to real situation in this room eventually but for now um depending on well I've, i haven't heard it back yet let's listen back to it let's listen back to it and see if it's any good so i, I managed to screw up there a little bit i'd left these switches in tape mode while i was recording so actually that tape kind of got ruined because the mix that's on these two tracks of the tape ended up mixed in with the vocals in the first one so I've gone back and redone it off screen I've also added a little bit of tube drive to my signal chain within the MPC because I felt like there's so much roughness to the other sounds that are on here um, the vocal by itself needed a little something that felt a little bit too clean. By the way, the camera microphone is just picking up little monitors in the room. Obviously, once I've completed the track, then I will put a proper digital capture up there so you can get the sort of idea of how this tape technology sounds if you're curious. Idea. Not really going to be your cup of tea unless you're also into the sensational Alex Harvey band and Nine Inch Nails. Don't consider myself a great singer or anything, but uh, that will do. I think we'll move on to the next track now. 
Right, excuse me while I go handheld to show you the really not complicated variation on how I'm using the MPC and the 244 together for this second open track. Where previously the microphone cable was going into the back of the 244, it is now going into the back of the MPC Live directly. And the uh, trim record level trim control on the back there. I've got that pretty much turned all the way up. The microphone's up here. Still on its boom stand. It doesn't really have a clip, so let's see if we can find a way where you can see the meter responding. You can see that the meter is only coming part of the way up, so it's not a very loud preamp. Really, we would be doing this if we had a great outboard preamp, you know, if we had one of these lunchbox API format things that are based on the circuits from classic Neve desks and stuff like that. Really, I'm just doing this to demonstrate that it's possible that I am not using the preamp on the 244 at all. So the output socket, I've got it set to output four. It's going into the receive port for the access point for channel 2. Hopefully you can see that the signal from the MPC is going into the 244. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, I'll go and do my second take. Let's have a listen to how that is sounding, bearing in mind my personal taste. No auto-tune, one take. Brief excursion. Pause this a second and say that what you're hearing, again, it's the speakers in the room being picked up by the camera. This isn't the full quality audio at this point. And in memory then I fall In the long run No significance at all it's not perfect, but it's good enough for my purposes. So I'm going to move on to using the MPC as a send effect. So I'll go and get set up for that. Okay, I've got something set up that I like. Briefly about the physical connections, I'll cut in some shots of the relevant, I was going to say orifices. Uh, that sounds a bit rude. Uh, what do I mean? Sockets. There we go. Plugs in the sockets. Again, I'm using RCA to RCA cables with um, some RCA to jack adapters for the MPC N because it's RCA sockets on the Tascam 244 and quarter inch jacks on the MPC. And really the auxiliary send sockets are going into inputs 1 and 2 and then the outputs 1 and 2 is coming out of the MPC and back to the Tascam 244. So I've got, it's just out of shot actually, but the you know big green auxiliary receive knob above the master fader that's set about halfway. Um, and so I find that the effect is quite loud if I go about three quarters on these send effects. I'm in post mode on these switches here that I'm pointing at just so that the fader level does affect the amount of effect that's being sent to the auxiliary bus. Here on the MPC I've named a new audio track vocal send. You can see I've got the monitor turned in. Inputs are one and two, outputs are one and two. So the inserts I've got as a analog delay and a non-linear reverb. So if I play this <laughs> So it's got that weird kind of creepy reverb on it that I can put on at certain points. Let me wind that back so you can hear it come in. So I'll turn it off. Authors would become columnists. So that's the effect that I'm going for. So when I do the final mix down, you'll hear me introduce those effects as I'm capturing the output of this audio recorder to a digital recorder. Okay, so line out is going to speakers. There's an auxiliary out, which is basically a copy of the line out. So that is going into my Zoom H6 handy recorder. So once my voice cuts out, what you're going to be hearing is the digital recording that I made using this recorder. So it'll be a fairly clear representation of what the 244 sounds like.
Hope that gave you some ideas about how you might use these two pieces of gear together. Or if you've already got a 244, this series of videos has given you an idea of how to use it. Thanks for watching. Stick around on my channel for more stuff about this and this together. About uh, repairing and using this in particular. Bye.